Folks, uh, today I would like to talk to you on the topic of the meditation technique that I would recommend for you. The background for this video is my conversation with one of the Christian friends about five or six days back. He has watched watched some of my YouTube videos and contacted me through Facebook and we were talking and I suggested to him certain outlines of how to do meditation. So that's what I want to share with you. <clears throat> but before I describe the technique, I would like to state certain basic facts underlying this technique. I have talked about this in various videos about these facts, but I thought it's a good idea to remind them again so that you will connect the technique that I'm suggesting with these basic facts. Then you will understand why I'm suggesting this technique what is the background and also all those things. First and foremost, there is an I-ness inside you, the feeling of I inside you. One of the basic facts is that there is only one I, though it appears to be in different bodies in this world, there is only one I. I talk about this very briefly. I have talked about this extensively in various videos, starting from 2018, my first video. Basically, that I, that I-ness, takes on various kinds of instruments. For example, in this world, it has the instrument called your human body, which has the mind and senses and so on. When, it, when that I-ness enters inside this body, this world appears to you as you see them now. And then when, when that I-ness is separated from the instrument human body, then you die. That's what's called death. So when this I-ness enters through this instrument, it's called birth. And when the I-ness is separated from the human body, it's called death. The events between the birth and death, that's what almost all of you know. There's hardly anyone at this point in time who has the direct experience beyond this birth and death. I happen to be one of those persons who have experienced that directly. I'll talk about this later in this video. Why I got this? What made me to experience this? I'll talk about that at the end if you're interested. But when you die, I talked about this, uh, you are forever. There is, I think, a, a video on that particular topic. I talked about this, what happens after death. So when you die, your body is separated from you. You join with this golden light and then you reach what is called the white light, which Christians call the Holy Spirit. And the golden light is what is called Christ's body by Christians and by various names by Hindu religions. Now, 
it is in this white light when you reach that white light you join with a undefined iness there is something called undefined in this in this white light there is something peculiar thing happens that is one eye separates into multiple eyes if multiple eye feelings now what i what i used to call various rays so when this one of these rays enters in the human body it is said that it's born so there are many 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 rays coming out of this white light in the sea of white light and when they enter into human body they appear to be in various bodies in this human world the man that you are all witnessing when you are awake i talked about this in one of the videos um uh, i believe in when i was talking about this white light uh, i published part 1 part Two and part three, my experience with the, my direct experience with the kingdom of God. There are other things I published. There are other parts about totally seven parts in Tamil, but I published only three in English. But if you have any interest, please leave a comment. I will publish other four parts too in English. But nevertheless. i discussed all those materials in one of the earlier videos some of the earlier videos especially i think three or four initial videos that i published in 2018 around september october time frame so um this one i there is only one iness but it separate appears to separate into multiple ions you can call them as small ions or rays and then enters into human body not pieces of different people in this world so the first fact that you need to be aware of is there is only one i <clears throat> second thing that you need to be aware of is in the kingdom of god that i experienced directly there is no religion there is no human being god is not a human being in that in the kingdom of god some of the folks they say that i saw jesus or shiva in my dream or even when i was meditating i saw them and all they are just seeing what is in their human mind but in the kingdom of god there is no human being there is only iness and then some unknown energies i talked about those energies in various direct experience videos so second fact that you need to be aware of which underlies my proposed meditation technique is there is no diff religious difference or it is no difference based on the caste the country or race or any division there is no trace of this in this kingdom of god there is only one i and there is no religion any such thing in the kingdom of god third thing that you need to be aware of is that there is a state of this i which is totally immersed with the energy around it and that's what hindus call probably i don't know what the prabrahman or some such thing the eternal unknown that has no time it's eternal it's forever timeless because there is nothing to be seen there nothing to see because both the seer and the seen are 
one and the same. That's timeless. So there is timelessness state of this I. Then next, when the creation takes place, there are various things, there are various things are created like the three lights and so on. So in that part of the kingdom of God, it's what is called present tense. That is just everything is present. There is no past, there is no future. It is just everything is present. This is what was told to Moses in the Mount Sinai experience. When Moses asked the thing that gave him the Ten Commandments, what should I tell my people from whom I got this Ten Commandments? And then that one said, I am that I am. What it means is that there is only I am present. I am. I am means it's always there. There is only one present tense. There is no past or present or future. But when that one I enters in multi after taking multiple I-ness as a rays of white light in the human world, there is present tense, past tense, future tense. That's mainly because of various changes that, uh, that can be observed through the five senses and the ability of the mind to store the in, uh, information. That's why the time is born. You calculate that, that time based on the movements of the uh, movement of the earth around the sun and so on, or various other techniques. So basically, these are the three important facts that we need to be aware of, which I express experience directly, which some of the Hindu scriptures say, but most of the Hindus have forgotten about it. One, there is only one I, I one I-ness. Second, it is not associated with any religion or country of origin or any race or color of the skin or caste or any such division. Number two. Number three. It is ever present. And also it is timeless. Now, with this background, Let's talk about the meditation techniques that I would like to recommend to you. I'm sure that most of you have some family. If you are married, you have your own family. And if you are unmarried, you are, you are living with your parents. So you have some duties like going to school, doing various work, or earning money for that you need to do various things and you have your own business and so on. You have to take care of your family, your wife or your husband, your kids and so on. Various things you need to do. You must do this. You cannot ignore them and then come and do this meditation technique that I am proposing. First thing is your duty, your responsibility to your family, and so on, your workplace, and so on. Apart from this, find some time and then sit down quietly. In the beginning, when you sit down quiet, you cannot be quiet. There are many, many thoughts circling around you, your eyeness that is circling around you. You will never be quiet in the beginning. Always there will be something happening at your in your mind. So, so to quiet down, use some of the uh, uh, music to quiet down your mind. For me, for example, some of the instrumental music helps me even now 
to make my mind be calm and quiet. But those music should be religious, free of any religious tone. There should not, there should not be a mantra that your religion has proposed to you, like Om Mantra or any such thing. Because if you use those techniques, and if you happen to find some figure, some God's form in front of you, then you will think that it is because I used my the mantra given by my guru and proposed in my religion and I saw that figure, so it's supreme, that mantra is supreme, you will start forming that opinion. It's not necessary. Then you will invariably see the form corresponding to the, 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 the mantra. Sometimes you will see other things also, but most of the time, you will only be restricted to forms that your mind can create. So to be free of all those things, use some music to quiet down your mind. And at that time, just in your own way, you don't have to say these following words, but you can even just think about those words within, your, within yourself. Something like this. People say that there is some God. Some people say there are many God, Christian God, Hindu God, Muslim God, etc., Buddha, Buddha and so on. But I don't know all. I don't know myself directly. I don't know who I am with respect to this unknown God. I would like to know more about it. If there is any such God, please come and help me. Help me to understand you. It doesn't have to be this many words. Just to say or think these things. And then be quiet. Do not expect anything to happen. Nothing may happen. You don't know when will happen, what will happen. If you see anything in front of you, any form of God, know that they are not. The, it's not the final one. <clears throat> the only way that you can know about God is realizing that you are that God. In other words, the I-ness inside you is the God that you have been searching for. That is the only way. But that is my experience, not your experience. You have to experience that yourself. For that, the technique that I suggested will help. You can vary these techniques based on your own background, personality and so on. But it should be, whatever it is, it should be religious, free of religion, any kind of uh, division-oriented information. That's extremely important. Second thing which is important is, if you see anything in front of you that is not the final one, your mind is trying to project something in front of you. <clears throat> Even when you are, don't experience anything in front of you, there may be this energy that I have been talking about, which is beyond your human body, will produce some changes in your life, in your mind, which will free you from all these divisions. But you also can, when you are not doing meditation, remove such divisive thoughts ideas from you, not forcefully, by understanding them. When you understand a, divis a divisive thought is a cause of human suffering, it will go away automatically. I talked about such divisive thoughts 
many videos and also there is a specific playlist that is something called ignorance and its removal watch them understand them as soon as you understand those ignorances will go away automatically even when you don't see anything in front of you as i said certain things your life may be changing without you without you being even aware of it for example in your family life you will move away from this attachment attachment oriented attraction towards your mother or wife your children which separates them from other people they are what is called conditional love i have talked extensively about the unconditional love that jesus christ was talking about and also in other religions that is due to that golden light which the body of jesus christ as he was telling in his own words when he was alive the first time in his first coming it's it has been there it is there in other religions too so you will you will you will happen to experience that un- unconditional love in your family life in your day to day life situation that could be another way of experiencing divinity you may be you may not be even aware that such things are happening in your own life nevertheless ultimate goal should be calmness quietness unconditional love towards everybody as well as as long as you live in this world it should not be a forced one it should be automatically <clears throat> i published a video called the meditation and yoga techniques that happened in my body automatically i think about 3 or 4 videos back after watching that video in tamil one of the viewers asked me it looks like a story yes it is a story <coughs> as far as you are concerned he also asked me how did you give the control to that energy so that it can come and do all those yogic and meditation techniques on your body i told him that you cannot do anything on your own just let that happen that is something very difficult to understand for him then i told him a story not a story the fact for example look at your body all the things that are happening inside your body what happens to the lungs the and the heart and various parts inside your body so many things are happening inside you you didn't submit yourself to something for that to happen it happens automatically when scientists discovered all those things for the first time i mean we have discovered those things and told the human beings for the first time all those things appeared to be stories just like uh, my uh, account of the various meditation and uh, yoga things that happened on my body appeared to you as stories that's what i told that friend hope you understand this things have to happen automatically if you force anything then it is your own desire you just in the meditation that i am recommending just be quiet without expecting anything sometimes there's some things may happen sometimes what happens may not you may not be aware of it. but finally one thing will happen if you let that happen that is unconditional love 
the happiness, the joy that happens because of that unconditional love in your life. And also the calmness, the quietness. And that should be more than enough for you to lead a peaceful, lovable, and loving life in this world. When, when you live that kind of life, you may or may not experience various things that you are God, etc. But when you live, when you live that peaceful, everlasting, unconditional love in this world, you'll be extremely joyful. That joy is the divine, believe me. Then in any case, when you die, you will realize whatever I told you about what happens after death. But in what way certain things will happen in your life, what kind of experience you like, all of you will not experience this extreme un unconditional love or joy and so on. It's based on various tendencies in which you are born in this world. As, uh, as I've been saying, when you, when you take a human body, when the eye is a ray of light from the white sea of light, enters a human body, takes on certain ignorances, certain tendencies rather, partly from storage, what I call Akashic record, or the mind of humanity, partly from your own ancestors, the past, the past lives, or lives of human body, human being rather. The things that you inherit from this Akashic record is not your own. It's left behind by somebody else. If that person happens to be a yogi, you will experience various divine experiences without you doing much, without much taking much effort. Everyone has certain tendencies. There are some rishis, they are not now, there were some rishis, Indian rishis, namely Parashara and Jaimini, who have, like scientists, formulated certain things to determine various tendencies surrounding you when you are born. That is, the tendencies that you have, you have when you take birth in this world, when this i takes birth in this world in a human body. But they are all somehow surrounded by all kinds of Purana stories, various stories which are alien to other religions. But that's what they know at that time. They don't know the science at that time, the modern science. There are some folks, there are some YouTube videos which you can watch about various ways of determining various tendencies in yourself based on those rules formulated by, by those rishis. I have a lot of interest right from young age to find out them. And I have found out what kind of tendencies I have so that so that, that encouraged me to experience all these things which nobody seemed to have experienced. The seventh seal or seventh chakra is not open to many people. If you are interested, I will publish them. Let me know in your comment. I will give it to you. You can go and analyze. So folks, that's what I want to talk to you. If you have any questions, please let me know. I will respond to them.